the five strangest and most bizarre moons in our solar system. A moon is a natural satellite that orbits a larger object, such as a planet. The planets in our solar system thus, excluding dwarf planets and asteroids, as far as we know currently host 205. Earth 1, Mars 2, Jupiter 79, Saturn 82, Uranus 27, and Neptune 14. Let's put it this way, those with the most mass possess the most moons. Although it's a bit more complicated than that, and perhaps the so-called hill sphere should also be considered. But it is a number that seems to grow exponentially every year, especially with the advent of interplanetary probes. In the early 1970s, for example, there were only 12 known satellites of Jupiter, those of Saturn 9, Uranus 5, and Neptune 2. But of course, there is a moon and moon. Natural satellites are so different from each other, both in size and appearance and surface conditions. Then there are the moons that are absolutely out of any pattern, surprising for a wide variety of reasons. So, we have put together five of them, chosen from among the most bizarre and mysterious. And only when all was said and done did we realize that they all belong to the Saturn system. Just a fluke? Or is it the rings that mix it up? Pan, a sculpture between rings. No, please, what is this? A sandwich with a huge slice of cheese in it? All right, we wanted to present the strangest moons, but this is really going too far. Okay, let's try to put things in order and figure it out anyway. We have known for a long time that Saturn's rings are composed of tiny fragments of ice and rock. And we also know that the rings do not show themselves with a uniform surface, but with concentric bands of different widths separated by almost empty gaps. This structure results from complex dynamics that are still not well understood, in which so-called shepherd satellites certainly play a role, i.e. small moons that orbit between the rings like shepherd dogs moving in a flock of sheep. A shepherd moon is a small natural satellite that clears a gap in a planetary ring material or keeps particles within a ring contained. The name is a result of the fact that they limit the herd of the ring particles, as a shepherd does. Due to their gravitational effect, they pick up particles and deflect them from their original orbits through the orbital resonance. This causes gaps in the ring system, such as the particularly striking Cassini division, as well as other characteristic bands or strange twisted deformation of rings. Pan is precisely such a moon. Its job, in fact, is to keep the so-called Encke division clear, a 325 km wide circular region located on the outer edge of the A-ring. Discovered in July 1990, it is the closest satellite to Saturn, being only 134,000 km from its center and 73,000 km from the top of the clouds. Its discovery was made by analyzing all the images taken years earlier by the Voyager 2 probe. It should be noted, however, that in 1985, before the actual discovery, its position had already been mathematically calculated thanks to the perturbations detected on a very thin ring inside Enke. But the real surprise came when the Cassini probe finally managed to photograph Pan rather closely. It turned out that it was an irregularly sized object measuring 35 by 23 by 23 kilometers. And so far, so normal. But it was the overall shape that was quite perplexing. The small satellite looked like melted ice cream a fried egg, or a stuffed sandwich. Or to be good, it might have resembled a small, misshapen Saturn, a central orb surrounded by a kind of ring. Of course, a whole bunch of theories have been proposed to explain the existence of this moon and its bizarre appearance. The most widely agreed upon is that Pan was formed by a gradual accretion of a piece of ice larger than the others. As the size of the object grew, the dust and ice particles in the rings aggregated more and more until they formed the central globe, 
some 20 kilometers wide. Later, the material inside the gap it was cleaning up, which was becoming increasingly scarce, continued to aggregate only in the equatorial part of Pan, also forming the characteristic skirt. Ultimately, we can define Pan as an ice sculpture, created by Saturn's rings themselves. But as we are about to see, it is by no means the only one. Atlas, the flying saucer. Saturn's other innermost moon named Atlas and discovered in 1980 by Voyager 1 during its flyover of Saturn, also possesses a kind of equatorial skirt, giving it a distinctive and eerie flying saucer shape. With an average radius of 15 kilometers, Atlas is about half the size of Pan, and like most of Saturn's satellites, it has a density of much less than that of water, indicating that its core must have formed by continuous accretion from the icy debris of the ring in which it orbits. Atlas is a little further than Pan from Saturn's center, 138,000 kilometers, and like Pan, it cleans up and controls its orbit, forming the so-called Keeler Gap, an ultra-thin gap only 35 kilometers wide, located on the outer edge of the A-ring. High-resolution images taken by the Cassini reveal that Atlas is composed of a roughly spherical globe surrounded by a broad, smooth equatorial ridge. Again, it is believed that the most likely explanation for this unusual structure is that of the gradual accumulation of icy material collected along its path in the Keeler Gap. The fact that the accumulation involves the equatorial region and not the entire central body depends on the fact that Saturn's rings are typically only 10 meters thick. The discovery and study of Atlas made it possible to generalize the accretion theory. Thus, it could be conclusively established that the moons that orbit in the ring gaps or are adjacent to the main rings have equatorial ridges of material consisting of accreted particles that are distinct from their rounded central cores. The cores are more structurally sound than ridges, with rougher surfaces and more impact craters. Complex patterns of grooves formed by tidal stresses crisscross the moons. What does Atlas look like? Well, seen in profile, a flying saucer immediately comes to mind. But seen from above, it almost looks like a fried egg. And it is also difficult just thinking about what it might be like to land, move, and walk on such a celestial body. Hyperion, the fossil moon. So far, we have talked about two moons that because of their smallness were discovered fairly recently by a space probe. Hyperion, on the other hand, is a classic moon discovered as far back as 1848. Classic from a historical point of view, of course, but physically bizarre like the others we have just talked about. This moon, distant from Saturn, 1.48 million kilometers, and whose dimensions are 360 by 266, by 205 kilometers, is in fact the largest irregular object known so far in the solar system. And it seems likely that it is a fragment of a larger body affected by a catastrophic impact in a very distant past. Confirming this, images taken by Voyager 2 and observations from Earth have shown that its rotation is chaotic. That is, the orientation of its axis of rotation is variable and unpredictable much like that of a spinning top gone mad. Hyperion is currently the only known body in the solar system, apart from a few small asteroids, that exhibits such a rotation. Like most of Saturn's moons, Hyperion is characterized by low density, just over half the density of water. It is therefore an object with a porous structure and consists mostly of water ice with a small percentage of rocks. The surface is dominated by a vast crater, about 120 kilometers wide, and it is also precisely because of the ease with which meteorites are able to pierce the icy crust full of deep and particularly steep craters, which gives this satellite a truly strange appearance. In fact, the appearance is that of a sponge, and better yet, a fossilized sponge or fossilized coral fragment which gives it a touch of inexpressible remoteness. Before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. 
Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Mimas, the destroyer of worlds. You no doubt remember that in the first Star Wars, the heroes Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Obi-Wan Kenobi approach with the Millennium Falcon, a strange moon that appeared after the destruction of the planet. And Obi-Wan at one point says, that's not a moon, that's a space station. Well, Mimas looks exactly like that space station, namely the iconic Death Star. A perfect sphere, very smooth, and with a huge, deep crater prominently displayed. Perhaps the scriptwriters already knew what Mimas looked like and wanted to take it as a model to conceive a surefire space station. No, impossible. It was just pure coincidence. In fact, Mimas was first photographed by Voyager 1 only in 1980, which is three years after the release of the film. No one at the time could therefore have known about the existence of that huge crater. Returning to astronomy, Mimas is the innermost of Saturn's main moons. It revolves around it at a distance of 186,000 kilometers, taking just less than 23 hours to make a full circle. At 400 kilometers in diameter, it is the smallest spherically shaped object in the solar system, as opposed to Hyperion, which, as we have just seen, is instead believed to be the largest of the irregularly shaped ones. To the list of its features, we can add that with its gravitational influence, Mimas keeps the Great Cassini division open. But of course, the reason we have included it in the list of the strangest moons lies precisely in the presence on its surface of a colossal impact crater 140 kilometers in diameter named Herschel. Herschel stretches about a third of the diameter of the entire satellite. Its walls are five kilometers high. In some parts, it is up to 10 kilometers deep relative to the surrounding surface and its central peak rises six kilometers above the base of the crater. By comparison, a lunar crater that scale to the same size as Herschel would have a diameter of 1,200 kilometers, wider than the entire Mare Imbrium. The impact that formed this crater nearly disintegrated Mimas, so much so that fractures caused by the shock waves that pass through it in its entirety are visible on the opposite side. Mimas, moreover, may be hiding an ocean of liquid water under the icy crust confirming itself as a moon full of mysterious secrets. Iapetus, the Zen Nut. With a diameter of 1,470 kilometers, less than half of that of our moon, Iapetus is the third largest satellite of Saturn and also among the farthest from the planet, orbiting at a distance of about 3.5 million kilometers. Iapetus has two bizarre properties that science still struggles to explain. It has a two-toned appearance and a giant equatorial ridge. How did it form and develop these strange properties? 350 years later, we still don't know. Almost. The first oddity was noticed in 1671 by the discoverer, the Italian astronomer Giovanni Domenico Cassini when he had to surrender to the evidence that although it orbited Saturn exactly like the other moons, Iapetus was visible only when it was to the right of Saturn, remaining completely invisible when it was to its left. For centuries, this remained one of the deepest mysteries of observational astronomy, a mystery partially solved only by the Voyager probes, which more than four decades ago revealed that the surface of Iapetus is divided into two hemispheres, literally as different as day and night. One hemisphere is in fact dark with a slightly reddish tint, while the other is as bright as one would expect to find on an icy moon. Altogether, the light side is more than five times as bright as the dark side. And interestingly, the two parts divide into a pattern similar to that of the two flaps that make up a tennis ball, or that which makes up the famous Taoist symbol of yin and yang. Like almost all other moons, Iapetus also orbits always turning the same face towards Saturn, which also means that one of its hemispheres, called leading, is always facing the direction of its orbital motion, while the other, called trailing, is always facing the opposite direction. 
Now, the fact that the leading hemisphere is the dark one raises more than one suspect that the cause of the blackening may be some carbonaceous organic substance that Iapetus encounters in its path. Kind of like when the windshield of your car gets full of dirt and bugs. As to the source of the substance, however, there is no certainty, although some are certain that it is the retrograde moon Phoebe that releases it. The second mystery of Iapetus is the equatorial ridge that runs along the Dark Hemisphere, about 1,300 kilometers long, 20 kilometers wide, and an average of 13 kilometers high. Now imagine standing at the base of this thing. You are confronted by a wall of rock, far taller than any mountain we could have here on Earth. And it's almost as tall as the largest mountain in our solar system, Olympus Mons, which is found on the planet Mars. Unlike Olympus Mons, this is a ramrod straight wall of ice that runs off either direction to your left or right, and you don't see it end. Instead, it just continues on, unabated, until it just disappears over the horizon over 100 kilometers away. Discovered when the Cassini spacecraft imaged Iapetus on December 31, 2004, the ridge forms a complex system including isolated peaks, segments of more than 200 kilometers wide, and sections with three near parallel ridges. The ridge system is heavily cratered, indicating that it is ancient. In essence, the prominent equatorial bulge gives Iapetus a walnut like appearance. It is not clear how the ridge formed. There are many current hypotheses, but none of them explains why the ridge follows the equator almost perfectly and why it is confined to the dark region. The connection between the giant equatorial wall and the fact that it is located in the dark hemisphere suggests that the two phenomena have a common cause, probably endogenous in origin. Five moons, five stories, a mountain of mystery still unsolved, and above it all, the incredible beauty of our solar system. What else?